So once you've set up your survey, um, you've added your questions, you have adjusted the look and feel if needed, you've gone through the survey flow to adjust how participants will navigate the way through the survey, you've adjusted any options, um, specific options you might have around the survey. Um, the, the next step would be to um, test your survey before launching it. So what I would suggest is you generate some test responses. So by default, it comes up with five. Um, this will just go through uh, generating standard test responses. Um, these won't have real words in them, but they will be numbers. But this helps when we start thinking about um, how we might be able to deal with the data analysis. So I would also run through some previews of how to uh, how the survey looks and try that in some different ways. So this is very useful before we begin to launch our survey. So I will get onto distribution, but just to say that when you run some test data, it may be worth going to the data and analysis um, option to uh, just look through the data to get an idea of what data is coming out and get a sense of whether that data is analyzable, how that might be, um, uh, how that might look, and how you might deal with that in terms of your um, whatever data analysis package that you might use. Because this can be really useful before you launch a survey to have some understanding of what you might do with the data when it comes in. So you're not surprised at how the data looks or how you might begin to analyze that when that comes in. But we'll talk about downloading the data in a moment. Um, so really, after we've finished our survey, um, the, the next step will, um, as I said, will move from left to right. You can perform some actions on the survey. So I will show you just uh, what they might be. So we can um, uh, set up some actions. So in other words, if you get a response, do you then get an email for each response, etc. These aren't necessary, but these are, if your survey is used, um, you'll see here the ticketing event, particularly if your survey is used for um, an online uh, query or question board where you want to get alerted every time that something happens, um, then, then you can use this feature. Um, I generally don't for research purposes, but if you're using it for um, collecting other sorts of information, then you can use that. So the next thing to do is think about your distribution of your survey. Um, there are a number of ways of doing this. You can, um, the most straightforward way is to just use an anonymous link. So if you go to web feature and click on anonymous link, there will just be a standard generic anonymous link and you can then use some URL shorteners to um, reduce that to a manageable link um, and send that out, put that on social media or some specific sites um, or um, email that out or post it on websites, etc. So that's the most straightforward way of, of doing this. Um, there is a, a, another way which you can do, which is you can compose an email. This is useful if you want to send out a direct email to known people to complete the survey. So I'm just going to um, click on uh, compose email to show you how this works. So what this does, it, it sets up uh, an email. And so what you'll need to do is um, set up a contact list for your contacts that you want to send this to. So the most straightforward way is to click on new contact list. What you can do is you can create a contact list and there's a way you can actually set it up um, in Excel or a spreadsheet and then upload your contacts. Or you can just um, enter them manually into the form here. So, you know, I'm going to call this test contact list. Um, and then I would enter some um, emails. So I'm just putting my email in here um, and then my first name. Um, and this is all we would need at this point to, to, to do that. You can actually add columns if you want to add other detail. Um, so this would be your contact list. This happens to have one contact um, and it comes automatically from some uh, a non reply address, but will have a reply to which will be your email. What you can then do is choose when you send that email. So it could be send now, send in one hour, etc. You choose the title. So um, this would be to survey and then you could type a message or if you've got a previous library message, you can um, add one of those here and um, so you can set out some standard messages to, to include, particularly useful if you're going to be doing surveys at various points, maybe repeated over um, uh, uh, different periods of time. You know, every February you send a survey about something, you could use a standard message that you saved. Um, but in the message here, you could um, again use a feature like pipe text. So what we can do here is go to the pipe text option and what we can do it from 
is in our contacts field, we could do the first name. So this would come directly from this contact list, their first name. So this would say Dear Paul or whoever that might be. Um, uh, some detail in here, instructions, information about the survey, um, which will be sent to the participants. And then what will happen here is a unique link will be sent to each participant, which is um, very useful. Um, and they can opt out of future emails or surveys. Now, the useful thing about uh, doing this is once we've sent out the um, message in this way, is that we can track those participants who haven't responded and we can send out reminders to all the participants who haven't responded. This obviously makes the survey not anonymous. So in my survey that I've set up, I've said that data will be anonymous. This obviously isn't. So we need to make sure that our information sheet is in line with whatever, however we're going to be collecting the data. So this is to a known contact or contact list and it will be following those contacts. So we'll be linking their email to that survey data. Now, obviously at a later stage, you can separate those two pieces of information for data protection purposes, but at the outset on Qualtrics, it will be linked. Um, so each participant will get a unique link. So then we can send a follow up email to those participants, only those who haven't completed the survey. And then what we can also do is send out a follow up email to participants um, who have completed it with a, for example, a thank you email. And so this is particularly useful for for known particular groups of people. So there may be if you're doing a staff survey, for example, um, and you know the emails of the people that you'll be sending it to, or you want to send it to a particular organisation or group of individuals who maybe have signed up to take part in a study at a previous point, um, you could add them as a contact list and send it out to those participants. So you put some information in here, send out the, the, the email, um, and then you can set up Qualtrics to do a follow-up email, say in a week's time or two weeks time for those participants who haven't completed it, and then a follow-up email to those participants who have completed it to say thank you. This can all be done through this, this, this section here. Um, so that's one way of doing uh, uh, collecting data. Um, as I said, there, there's uh, 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 other ways oops, of collecting data. So sorry, I just clicked on the wrong menu item there. So in distributions, the, the standard one will be just an anonymous link. So here we have um, an anonymous link. So this generic link, if you copy this generic link, you can use this and we can potentially customize it with any form of URL shortener um, that you might want to include. Um, if you wanted a QR code, it can generate this. So this can be used if you want it, for example, on a poster or something physical where participants can then use their phone to immediately access um, their uh, uh, the survey. So this could be on a, a flyer at an event or a handout or could be included on, for example, someone's badge if they wanted to do a follow-up survey for um, uh, uh, um, some experience or feedback on uh, an event. Um, so QR codes can be useful for such things, um, but what we obviously don't track. So then any of this, whether it's an anonymous link or a QR code will be gen general. And so we won't be able to follow up those participants who haven't completed. And this is useful for anonymous surveys, but not useful if you want to use the follow up feature. Um, so you can directly send it through these, which really will just send them through to uh, this standard uh, anonymous link. So when we're launched, if we go back to our survey, what we can do, that is the link for our survey. Um, and the survey is now published um, because I clicked on that, that link there. Um, and if I edit it now, I can republish it. So if I can edit it, obviously what it will do, if I just add some features here, um, this, as it comes up, you're currently making edits to this survey, it won't be live until published. So now you can see here, I can publish that um, and I can put my name and I could potentially put a date here um, and publish it. So when I looked, if I wanted to go back to different versions of the survey, I can see which versions have been published when and what changes were made and revert to previous versions. Obviously, what you don't want to do when people have begun completing the survey is to publish the, um, republish the survey. And so the questions have altered fundamentally. So the data actually is different from those different responses. So be cautious about editing live surveys um, once you've done it, but you can do if there's minor tweaks or a spelling mistake, for example, it's, it is fine to do those kind of edits. 
Okay, so that's about distributing surveys. Um, in the next video, we'll go on to data analysis and reporting.